Hello everybody and welcome to Watch Me Go Broke. Welcome today to the review of the Orient Ray 2. Yes, I know I'm a few years late on this watch, but for what it offers for the price, I think it's still worth a look at. Now, I shan't be showing you what's on my wrist today. I will show you a little later in the video, so stay tuned. And here is today's watch. This is the Orient Ray 2, a cheap and affordable 200 meter water resistant watch. You've got a 41.5 millimeter case, a thickness of 13 millimeters, a lug to lug of 47 millimeters, and a 22 millimeter lug width that tapers down to 20 at the clasp. The case is stainless steel and has a mixture of brushed and polished surfaces, brushing on the top of the lugs and high polish on the sides. The bezel is a 120 click unidirectional dive time bezel with an aluminum insert, which surrounds a flat mineral crystal. The bezel action is pretty good and it's above a lot of other watches that cost more. The aluminum insert is a very unique feature on this watch. I guess you could call this notched as there are cutouts at every 10 minute increments around the bezel. Zooming in on the dial, you see just below the 12 o'clock position, one of the greatest logos of all time. It's applied and it is classy as all heckins. Just above the six o'clock position, you have Water Resist 200M. The font that has been chosen is excellent. The indices appear to be all applied with, and forgive me because I am probably about to use a word that doesn't exist, trapezoidal markers at the 12, 6, and 9 positions, if that's something. Uh, at the 3 o'clock position, you have a day-date complication. I'm not entirely sure what to call this mishmash handset. The minute hand is sword style, while the hour hand appears slightly cathedral that has a high polished bridge, if you will, separating the hand into two sections. The second hand is very nice looking, done in an arrowhead style. Because it is small, it is hard to tell if the color is red or orange. I'm kind of on the fence, but my best guess is red. Taking a look at the case back, please excuse the sticker residue. It's a solid looking screw down case back with a very nicely etched logo in the center. I really like the shape of the case back, even if it does add a little bit of girth to the watch. The crown is a screw down crown featuring that beautiful Orient logo, but honestly, it is way undersized and very difficult to operate. The watch is powered by the in-house Orient F6522, which hand winds and hacks, has 22 joules, beats at 21,600 vibrations per hour, and has a power reserve of around 40 hours. On to the bracelet, which is pretty much a piece of crap. It has hollow end links, which honestly don't bother me too much because they're female and it makes the watch wear true to size. It is a split pin bracelet, but I found the pins very oddly shaped and more difficult to remove than they should have been. They sit further into the link than many other split pin bracelets. In my struggles to remove the pin, I warped the bracelet a little bit. It's an easy fix, but it really shouldn't have happened. The clasp is pretty much your standard Seiko-esque clasp, double pushers and a fold over. It's cheap stamped metal, but it gets the job done. Let's check out the loom. The loom is pretty good and much more than I was expecting at this price. And here it is out in the natural world on my seven and a half inch wrist. I think it wears surprisingly nice and the 41 and a half millimeter case seems to wear a bit smaller than the dimensions would suggest. All in all, I think this is a good watch, but it is missing a few things I think that keep it from being a great watch. The crystal being only mineral and nothing special is a little bit of a letdown. And the bezel, while it's well done, kind of makes the watch look mid 1990s, even though it's not. And of course the bracelet is terrible. If those things were fixed, I think this watch would be killer. You know what? I, I'm gonna fix those things right quick. Oh, yes. Okay, guys, I have switched out those things that I took an issue with. I now have a double domed sapphire crystal from Mark at LongIslandWatch.com. I have a coin edged bezel 
from Mark at LongIslandWatch.com. I've got a loomed ceramic bezel insert. Well, it's actually loomed sapphire bezel insert from loomedceramicbezelinserts.com. And of course, I have a bracelet from Strap Code with, I think, Strap Code's best clasp that they've ever done. Double pushers to deploy. Look at that carbon fiber style. Really substantial. And of course, it is a ratcheting, a ratcheting bezel. Yes, I'm sorry, not bezel. Ratcheting clasp there with, you know, micro adjusts for diving and stuff like that. But man, I think this is awesome. And this was inspired by the watch that is on my wrist today, which came from Leo V over at Leo V Cars and Watches on YouTube. Check him out. Uh, this watch looks awesome. Let me take it off and show you side by side. So here we are side by side. Leo generously sent me this watch to take a look at. I think he probably knew I couldn't let it go and I'd have to build my own here. But he's also used a strap code bracelet. It is their uh, end mill bracelet. It's got that great uh, clasp with six micro adjusts, fold over, double pushers. Everything's great on there. He's also got a double domed uh, sapphire crystal there and the loomed uh, sapphire insert as well. So man, who did it better guys? Which one looks better? Well, I think it's Leo by far. Uh, man, that blue color just is amazing. That blue sunburst dial plays off that bezel really, really well. So now let's check out the loom. Well, the loom is amazing. Oh my gosh, that's what blew me away on the watch that Leo sent me. And I just love it. I think that loomed sapphire bezel insert is just fantastic. It lasts a long time and it plays off great with those uh, very, very well loomed dial markers. So would I recommend you do this to your Orient Ray 2? Well, if you've had the Orient Ray 2 for a while, a few years, maybe it doesn't get the wrist time uh, anymore. I think this is a really great way to upgrade the watch uh, to where, you know, it, it puts a little more interest into it again. I would not recommend buying an Orient Ray 2 with the intention to do this because the cost of all of this stuff, of all of the mods, is the same price as the actual watch. So. If you have a ray you're sitting on, this might be something worth it. Uh, if, uh, if not, I don't think it's very cost effective to uh, just buy everything and do the mod as Leo and I have done here. But uh, that's all I have today, guys. I hope you like it. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I will see you next time.